Cool. So welcome everybody to week one of our 90 day series. For those of you that did not watch the video yesterday, the live video I did from Big Bear, uh, I'm doing this to train uh, everybody really, you know, number one, my team, number two, my organization at EXP that I love and, and I'm responsible for all their success. And, um, and number three, once we get to a certain point towards the end of this, uh, whoever has been trying the hardest and following the daily and weekly homework, I'm going to hand select the agents that I'm going to um, uh, coach one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm going to take those people over the next year to 100 transactions. So if you don't want to go to 100 transactions, you might want to let me know up front. Um, it's a lot simpler than you might think, uh, and it's fun too. So I have a little bit of notes here. Uh, it's it's crazy to have everybody on mute and me be the only one talking. Um, but rule number one, if you want somebody in our group, as long as they're a real estate agent, you can add them. Just let them know they need to catch up on um, the weekly homework if you add them week two or whatever. Um, past that much, I wouldn't be adding anybody more past then because they'll be too far behind. Um, try. I'm going to post a lot in that group um, since we do have over 100 people in this group. Um, it's going to be, I'm just going to put all the information in there. So if you have a question, I probably am answering it in one of the videos. Um, I also told all you guys to download the Marco Polo app. So if you want to talk to me, the Marco Polo app is the very best way and Facebook Messenger is the next way. Uh, if you text me, there's a really good chance I won't get to it for, you know, until the end of the day, something like that. Uh, we just have way too many um, text messages and emails coming in. So if you don't, um, if you don't uh, follow that, then then there's a good chance you won't get a get a hold of me. So then also what I wanted to say is make sure you guys are proving to me that you're doing your homework. Now one of the things that is important to me is I think that's that old thing the the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So never think you're bugging me, right? Always, always reach out, tag me in your posts. If I give you homework that's a social media related thing, it's okay to tag me in anything you want. I will remove the tag. I spend most of my day on social media damage, so it's okay to, um, to include me on those things. I wanna see what you're doing. I wanna feel the energy and I wanna know you guys are excited and getting this stuff done. This, like I said, this is a lot easier um, than you think. And as long as you follow the steps exactly, you're going to be just fine. Uh, one, of the other, one of the other tasks I gave you guys before this group started was to make sure you have your CRM completely figured out and ready to get that up and running and accurate. I say it a lot in my classes, one of the, my biggest regrets in life is not keeping my database accurate. And um, I know my business has suffered tremendously because of it. And I never want you guys to feel the pain that I've gone through. And that's one of the reasons I teach is because I, I just want you guys to bypass all the hoopla that I've had to go through. And you can bypass 25 years of pain if you just listen to what I say now. Also, Deanna Miller, I can see her. Hi, Deanna. She's, she's waving right there. She is my marketing specialist. She works full time in this office. And she was wonderful enough to put a Google form out there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you guys free access to David Knox Coaching. It's a subscription-based um, website that I pay for. There's gonna be certain videos in there that I'm gonna ask you to watch. And if you're a brand new agent or newer, if less than, let's say less than a few deals in the last year, I wanna put you on new agent multi-week training and new agent fast start. That way you guys can kind of catch up a little faster with or without me. Also on top of that, we're going to give you access to the Maxa program for 90 days. Many of you that are in my organization at eXp already have access to it. And those of you that are not, we're going to give it to you. Um, it is branded eXp and all you have to do is remove the logo and put your own company logo in. I think Deanna is going to do a little video in our Facebook group to show you how to do that. Um, so, if you have not registered on that Google form, you better because that's the way you're going to get access to these things because it's too many people that do one by one. We're going to do it by a CSV file. And um, so I think I'm going to get ready to roll. Everybody ready to roll? Thumbs up. 
Awesome. Okay. So I'm super excited to do this class for you guys. Um, it's, it's one of those things where I have so much knowledge and I'm so passionate about so many things that I just want to feed you through a fire hose. And you guys know what that's like, right? It'll blow your head off. But it's just like anything else. Like if you, you know, if you're going to eat an elephant, it's just bite, 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 bite. Sometimes I'm going to go really fast. And there's about four or five things that are the most important in real estate. And I want to cram it all into you guys on call one, but I just can't. It's, it's going to take too long. So I'm going to try to break it up as easy as possible. So as we go down this path, I'm going to start where I feel it's necessary to start. And, um, and just kind of looking back and, and looking at the agents that I'm working with now and how I'm training the team now, um, like these are, these are where I think you should start. Like if you were going to learn how to golf, what would you do first? Would you go out and buy clubs? Would you join a country club? You know, all those steps. And, and, and I really want to just fire it all at you, but I know I can't. Um, there's a couple of things in real estate that we need to be very careful of. And the, there's, there's three things that stick out the most to me and write this down because it's really important that, and if you guys have been training with me a while, you know, the seven F's are huge to me and half of you on this call right now are going to go, God dang it, shoot me if I have to hear this again, but I don't care because some of you guys haven't heard it before. Um, the second thing is time management. Time management in real estate is everything because believe it or not, we as humans can accomplish a lot in one day if we stay on track and we know how to organize our, our days. Um, and then the third thing, which is absolutely vital to a real estate agent is mindset. So those three things are is what I'm going to talk about today. And we're going to um, dive a little bit deeper into some of these things. But what I want you guys to remember is every single day, every single class has videos and or, and or a podcast or both for you guys to do your homework. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go to a, a little uh, part of the double your production in 30 days. And we're just going to start right off in the, the mode of the seven F's. Um, when we as real estate agents start working at this, we're going to leave a lot of people in the dust. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, you're heavily committed to kicking butt and then you're heavily committed to uh, trying and doing all your homework. And there's things that we forget about in life that I don't want you guys to lose friendships, um, you know, lose your spouses, lose your friends, and lose track of what matters. So you can see right there on the screen that episode 40, Creating Balance, um, is one of the uh, podcasts. There, there's, there's a bunch of these all over the place. And I'm going to go through this quickly, but I don't want you guys to um, wander off mentally while I talk about this because some of the people on this call that I coach right now are having tremendous amounts of issues with balance in life. And although you guys have heard this from me before, maybe the second or third time it might sink in a little bit more. Um, faith to me is really important. There was probably my first 10 years of the real estate business, I was pretty much dead inside. And the reason was is I was making a million dollars a year and that was fine and dandy, but I didn't really believe in anything and I didn't have faith in anything. And it's kind of funny. I never really had faith in anything until I watched The Secret. And I'm a big believer in the law of attraction. And finally, that movie was one of the things that helped me understand faith. Now, everybody's got different faiths, whether it's, you know, you're Christian, you're Catholic, you're Buddhist, you know, you're Jehovah's Witness, Mormon. I don't care what it is, but if you're not feeling faith in something it's like you're on this treadmill and you can never get off and you're never going to find peace inside and peace inside of us is what makes us really good at real estate family family is often the one that suffers the most and that's because we're working 12 15 16 hour days and through this process i don't want you guys to lose track of your family um, friends too. If, if, if all we did was stay with our friends, our family all the time, we would go absolutely ballistic. And friends are people that we like to be around because we can, um, you know, we can do different things with them. We can 
say different things to friends and we really get to release and, and relax a little bit better sometimes with friends. Um, fitness, this is, this is so important for me right now. Um, it takes energy. You got to give energy to receive it. And I always joke around. I say, listen, you guys, when is the last time you went to the gym? Sam, Urban, turn your camera off, dude. Um, when you when you go to the gym, it's probably one of those things where you notice your friends, they will go live on Facebook and they have so much energy and they're telling you about how they're the world's greatest trainer on the planet, whatnot. And, uh, you know, there's never been a time where you're in a bad mood after working out. But more importantly is we don't want you in the hospital, okay? Because you're in the hospital, you're not going to do very good. Finances, this is scary, guys. This is another thing that took me a long time to learn. Um, finances are things like taxes, things like, um, you know, how are we going to save for rental properties? And you want to balance this stuff out because by the time you're done with this year, you're going to be making a lot more money than you're used to. So be very careful with your finances. Um, you know, get a, get, a, get a good financial planner and get a hold of your finances. Um, future business too. We don't want to die as real estate agents and we need to be diverse. Some of you on this call have never been through recession and it is the worst and the most scary thing on the planet to go through. Uh, if you're diversified, you have other means of income, you're going to be okay. So my example is in 2007 when I knew we were coming into something that was the worst that, that, that I've ever seen, I started my property management company. And if it wasn't for my property management company, I probably wouldn't have made it through the recession. I also started coaching back then too. I was teaching real estate agents how to open up property management companies. And that's where the name agent mechanics came from. And I, and I, and I was selling coaching for that and that got me through the recession. So let's kind of, I don't want you guys to lose total focus of real estate, but as you plan and go through the, the motions, let's think about that a little bit. And then fun. If talk about being dead inside, I know agents that love to work and they, they work seven days a week and they just never have fun. I'm like, why bother? What are you, what are you even in this business for? Cause they don't take days off. They don't spend time um, doing fun things. And I happen to have this. This is a gift for one of my coaching clients. This is what I like to use. If you guys can see this, it's just a blank calendar that you get at Michael's or whatever. And just there's seven days in a week and there's seven things right here. So get together with your spouse significant other or family in the beginning of the week and just go over that and say we're going to pick one of these things every single day and then pretty soon you're going to have two a day three a day but now we're going to move into mindset so we all are sitting on this call going mike i understand mindset mindset is something that you know you don't need to talk about and i'd rather you get into the meat and potatoes of coaching and and tell me all these shiny sh silvery objects that are going to be the silver bullet of real estate well, this is the silver bullet of real estate, and I can promise you this. There's a big difference between growth mindset and fixed mindset. And if you look around your life, you'll know and you'll see the people that are in a fixed mindset. And it's kind of funny, the building I'm in right now, I worked in when it was Remax building for 14 years, and, I, and I'm looking out at the freeway, the five freeway, and there's traffic on it every morning to where I'd rather poke, you know, really sharp things in my eyes than sit in that traffic. And one day I was sitting here thinking, I go, you know what? Those people, you know, 90% of those people don't have to be on the freeway right now, um, but they're in a very fixed mindset. They've already, they've already planned their life out. Well, this is what I do. I sit in traffic for two hours a day and I go through life and that's just what I've created. And if they had a growth mindset, they could do a bunch more different things. They could get different jobs. They could start their own businesses. They could go at different hours. They could do all different kinds of stuff, but they don't. They're stuck in this fixed mindset. And as soon as you make the conscious and unconscious de decision to go to a growth mindset, some really important things happen. So some of the thoughts for today is how far are you willing to go? And when I say how far are you willing to go, are you going to commit to the perfect daily schedule that I'm going to give you? Are you going to commit to changing the way you do your business as far as maybe it's an open house or maybe are you willing to commit to the way I tell you to work with your social media, things like that? Um, you know, it's, a, it's one of those things where you're going to have to take it very seriously 
And if you can't commit to yourself, it's going to be really hard to get your real estate business up and running. Um, practicing like a professional, there's, there's agents on this call right now that think, I already know what I'm doing. I've been in this business for 10 years and I don't need to role play every day and I don't need to watch Mike's podcast and I don't need to, I don't need to. But in reality, if I went up against you at a listing appointment, I would smoke your ass so bad you wouldn't know it hit you. And that's because I'm willing to practice like a professional every single day. And we all know the cliche things like, you know, Tiger Woods and all the, all the baseball and football players that really practice and they practice eight hours a day. And if we want to make a million dollars a year like them, why wouldn't we practice like them too? So things that flow out of your mouth just are natural. Are you willing to give up the Sunday barbecue? And what this means here is, I remember when I was 19 and on Sundays, my friend said it was Sunday fun day and I had FOMO more than any teenager you'd ever meet. I wanted to go so bad to the volleyball um, parties, the pool parties, the Sunday barbecues, but I knew a, a true open house does not end until six o'clock at night in the summers. And I would miss those barbecues and it was pretty much every Sunday because I'm committed to do open houses every weekend. And that was just one of the things that I had to give up to take my real estate business to the next level and I knew it. And, and to this day, I bet you that's one of the reasons I hate open houses because I think of all the things that I missed growing up that all my friends were you know, floating in pools, drinking beers, barbecuing when I was you know, in a suit and tie in 100 degree weather chasing open house signs up and down the streets, you know? So sometimes there's gonna be things that I ask you to give up, especially when we get into a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Some people have ridiculous hobbies and they spend way too much time with them and way too much money on things and they, they're focusing sometimes on the wrong thing. So you're gonna know about that as we go a little, little further deeper in your own mind. Um, taking risks, that's a big one right now. I'm going to probably ask you to buy technology and spend some money during this at some point. And you're going to say, I can't afford that. Right. And taking risk is a big thing. When I was young in the business, I took risks and I bought cell phones when they were, you know, $3,000 a piece. And I bought uh, really nice cars to show buyers in because I wanted the buyers to be comfortable in my car and not want to jump out because they were uncomfortable. There's little things like that, but there's going to be some risks involved. And when I say things and you get that, that weird butterfly in your stomach or your heart sinks and you just go, oh my God, these are the things I'm going to talk about. And some of these risks are going to be um, necessary for you guys to move up, move, up, move forward. Um, coachable. Another thing is, and I think we kind of touched on it before, some people say, Mike, I like about 60% of what you're saying, but the other 40%, no, I would never do, or that's not me. Uh, I'm looking at some of the faces on the call right now where they've said, I'm just not that kind of agent, Mike, and I just don't do those things. Well, I'm going to ask you, if I'm going to spend this time and commitment to train you guys, I'm going to ask you to try and be coachable. Because when you're coachable, your mind opens up and it's willing to do um, things that it's never been willing to do before. And, and there's going to be some things that are going to feel weird and uncomfortable. I'll tell you right now. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, I'll leave that part out. All right. Did you guys see that, by the way? That was episode 11. Okay. Thank you, man. All right. Had to mute that person out. Um, so episode 11, real estate mindset. I've had more people call me and say that particular um, podcast has changed more lives than any of the other ones that... Um, that, I've, that they've listened to. So make sure this is part of your homework. Make sure you listen to that one, episode 11. It's at the realestatemarketingshow.com and we'll have uh, myself or Deanna post that in the group uh, during, in our little homework section that we're gonna have. So let's go to find out why this isn't working. All right, so when we talk about being honest with ourselves. This is a really good time to talk about it because if you're going to add a transaction a week to your real estate business, this is a good time to talk to yourself and say, am I really truly willing to make the time, the energy, the mental commitments right now? Um, and if you are one of those people that 
say, oh, I'm going to go to the gym every morning at six. And you've been saying that for five years, but you've never made it. Let's try to be honest with ourselves and, and say, look, if I'm not going to commit to this, I'm not going to commit to this and just go ahead and take off right now. Um, and if you're not, if you don't feel there's, there's a, if you honestly don't feel you, the change is necessary, then this might be a good time to be honest with yourself. Uh, be transparent. When I talk about be transparent, this is a lot for your family. You know, um, young kids, especially spouses that aren't used to you going to the next level, be transparent with them and say, listen, over the next 90 days, I'm going to be doing some things that are a little different than we're used to. I'm going to make a little bit bigger commitment to our careers and, you know, let them know, um, you know, I'm scared, but I want to do this. And I want to, I want to make sure our family is secure forever. I want to treat this as a career, not a job. And that's a really big part of real estate. Some people that have been in real estate two, three, four years, they still can't mentally accept that they have a career. They still can't understand that, that this isn't something they're dabbling in. So be transparent with your family, be accountable. Um, you know, this is a good time where I like to say to my coaching clients, if you want a coach that is going to hold your hand and be really sweet and careful with your feelings, you're going to want to leave this right now because I'm not that kind of guy. And if you ask me to hold you accountable, I'm going to. And, and I like to hold people accountable, but I'll be honest with you. I'm not the guy that is just real easy on you. I'm going to be tough on you. And you're probably going to cry a couple times throughout this 90 days. And that's just the way it is. Um, it's kind of like a boot camp, if you will. Be willing to compete all out. This one here means everything to me. And I'll tell you why. And some of you have heard this story before. When I was young in the business, and I told you I started doing a lot of open houses, because remember back in the day, guys, we didn't have internet at all back then. We didn't have cell phones. All we had was door knocking, expired listings, open houses, the usual stuff that Century 21 still teaches you to do to this day. So that's all we had. But one of the things that I had to learn was when somebody came into an open house and they said, hey, yeah, I'm already working with another agent. I would be like, oh, okay, well, go look at the house. That's fine. And let me know if you have any questions and have a good day. But what I found out was most of those people weren't working with agents. And the ones that they were, they weren't, they were working with the wrong agent and the agent that wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing to find them a home. And it's kind of funny. And that's kind of how the script came up. And I'd say, wow, well, if I could find you a home that's not on the market, maybe a pre foreclosure or back then it was short pay that's not on the market yet, would you see that with me? And they go, yeah, but I have an agent. But if I could find you your dream home that's not yet on the market, would you see that with me? And then they'd say yes. And then before you know it, I would double my buyer um, pipeline because these people now are like, okay, they were opening up and I was asking the right questions. Um, and then I learned when it came to listing appointments, I wouldn't even care anymore. I would never ask them. I don't, I just wouldn't care. I would just compete all out because I wanted that listing. I knew that if I was going to come home after my, my baby son was already in bed and I didn't get to read him a book and tuck him into bed, you bet your ass I would be willing to compete all out because coming home and looking at my wife in the eyes and tell her I didn't get the listing, but yet I missed dinner and I didn't get to tuck my kid in. No way. So I learned how to compete all out. You guys got to stop being softies. And remember, this is for your family, your friends, the other agents in this industry are not paying your bills, nor do they want to pay your bills. And as a matter of fact, they're talking trash about your back behind your back right now about you. So when it comes to competing, compete, whether it's buyers or sellers. So realestatemarketingshow.com is where you're going to find that number 11 podcast, or it says seven here. Maybe it's seven. I'm, I think it's 11. All right. So down there at the bottom, episode 17, this is my daily schedule. If you guys want to sell 50 homes a year, which is the goal of this particular course, I want you to use my schedule. Now this schedule here is our club wealth. And many of you are in club wealth on here. Perfect daily schedule, right? So I'm not the guy that is very analytical. You cannot micromanage me down to when I brush my teeth. It's not going to work. I'm not that guy. But what I am a guy is, is I do, can do a couple things. Number one, I am going to prospect two hours a day. 
Now, two hours a day is the absolute maximum I'm gonna ask you to prospect because I know after two hours, I am exhausted and I'm drained and it's gonna screw up the rest of my day. Um, but then I can't properly get my day done if I go longer than two hours a day because I still have other things to do. I still have a life and there's more to real estate than just prospecting. But I promise you, if you prospect two hours a day and talk to 50 people, you're gonna sell 100 homes a year. If you only want to sell 50 homes a year, you're going to have to talk to 25 people. So I would put that really big in front of you. And I would not think about going to bed until I've talked to my 25 or 50 people. Two hours a day of previewing property. The schedule works. I love whoever's putting that on there. Um, oh, that's Larry. <laughs> Larry on my team. He's awesome. So the the interesting thing about previewing two hours a day is it's the hardest thing of everything to do but what's ironic about it is if you do preview two hours a day you double your production and i'll tell you why if you're working with sellers which i want you all to is make darn sure you know every single home on the market because inevitably what's going to happen over the years you're going to go to listing appointments and you're going to take a lot less expensive homes you're going to take a lot less listings that expire and you're going to have the confidence built up, built up with your clients because you know everything about the market in today's technologically advanced world our buyers and sellers know more about their neighborhood and the market than we do and that's scary right so as the confidence level continues to decrease in real estate agents based on those nar statistics this is one of the reasons why it's because they have access to so much technology that we didn't used to. So two hours a day of previewing is crucial for sellers and especially for buyers. If you're still gonna work buyers, which I don't recommend you do, um, you're gonna wanna be able to take somebody out one time, show them three houses and have them pick one. And we're gonna go over buyer mastery later on through this course, but there's many agents that I talk to you all the time that I say, who are you going out with? And when I, and when I do coach you guys one-on-one, -on -one, you'll see that I have a very vested interest in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and we go over each and every one of these clients and we find out why they haven't bought yet. And, and most of the time what happens is the agents just don't know the market. They live in big uh, urban cities and there's probably 30, 40 homes on the market in that price range. And then you'll have probably two or three new ones a week come on the market. So, so now they're working with Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Jones over and over and over every weekend. But if previewing homes solves all that, one of my very favorite scripts in the world is I tell a buyer the day they get in my car, I say, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, one of the benefits of working with Team Bjorkman is I know the market better than anybody. I search all day, every day for on and off market homes. If you tell me exactly what your needs are and your wants are, I can hand pick three to five homes for you to see today and knowing that those are gonna be the very best ones. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you the very best one first and then I'm gonna go back down the line from one through five and know at all times the first or second home I show you is the one you should buy and the other ones are close but probably not. And you create so much excitement with these people. And if they buy into your confidence, they trust you, they're going to buy. Especially if somebody says, I have to have, you know, a floor plan like this. I have to have a sliding glass door that goes out the master bedroom. I have to, have to, have to. But if, if you can show them, <clears throat> somebody calls and a typical agent will say, hey, Mr. Smith, yeah, you want to buy a home, 500 grand in Valencia? Yeah, that's cool. Let me run a list, let me get a bunch of properties together and we'll show you homes on Saturday. Different conversation when you know the market perfectly, you can say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I know exactly what you're looking for. I have three homes in mind. One's on a cul-de-sac, one has a view, and one's kind of a fixer-upper, but it's a really good deal. Those three homes, as of this morning, were still available. Would you like to see one of those? And they're like blown away because you know exactly what they're looking for. When I call an agent, and I just did this yesterday in Big Bear, I'm looking to buy a vacation home, and I called a couple agents, and they're like, oh, I don't know, give me your email, I'll just you know, send you things as they come on the market. And I'm like, oh, they're still doing it. These people are still doing it, right? And then when, you, when I did find this one lady, and she's like, yeah, I know every single home on the market, da, 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 da. I'm like, God, there you go. And I asked her, I said, do you preview homes all day? She goes, well, I run the hot sheet every day, and then I actually go on Caravan every single week, and all of our homes are on Caravan up here. So they, oh, that's very cool. All right, so one hour a day of self-help. 
self-help for me and most people is a mind blower. Like you'll probably see everybody was at Grant Cardone in Vegas this weekend, right? 10X. It's probably one of the most motivating things you could ever do. Those people that were there are fired up for the next three months, no matter what. However, we have to keep ourselves fired up at all times. Um, so motivation to me is everything because we get beat up so bad in this business that if, if you have the wrong mindset and you're not pumped up on your self-help, people are gonna bring you down and drag you through the mud. And there's probably days where you wonder if you should even stay in this business, and that's normal. But if you were listening to an hour of Tony Robbins this morning, or an hour of Grant Cardone this morning, or somebody who's motivating to you, or listening to how to avoid cancer or weight loss or something cool, your, your body is being nourished by all this knowledge all the time, and it is motivating, and you stay on top of the world. So if an expired listing tells you to F off, you're like, whatever, on to the next one. But if you're not in the right mindset, there's, there is going to be times where you, you're going to think, you know what, maybe that person's right. Maybe I shouldn't be bugging them. Totally different mindset. Our day of skill set. We talked a little bit about how this homework is going to work during this course. And there's going to be at least an hour a day of skill set. I can't teach you guys everything in one hour, right? So there's going to be some videos and some books and some other stuff. But if you have an hour a day at that, eventually you're going to be such a kick butt agent. It's not even funny. So we're going to do all kinds of things. Scripts and dialogues are very important, but not only that skill set could be like, Hey, how do, how am I more effective with my MLS, with my contracts? You know, somebody, sometimes even the newer agents on here, you guys don't even know how to create, you know, write a subject to or a land contract or, you know, an AITD. And some of you on this call are probably, like, what is that? Well, these are ways we sell homes. And as the market shifts, you're going to need to sell homes this way, right? When interest rates go up, you're going to need these certain things. So our day of skill set just gets better and better and better. There's a guy named, I guess, his, well, his name's Brad. He's from Portland, Oregon. I went up to Salem one time when I owned HomeSmart and I was speaking at his, uh, at their conference. And he referred me his parents the other day that lived just right around the corner from my house. And I actually went on the listing appointment myself and Brad had given them a list of questions to ask me and they're pretty good questions. And, and I'm like, wow, man, like if I didn't know the answers to those questions, I probably wouldn't have gotten that listing. And, and they were, you know, and if you look on my website at teambjorkman.com and click on sell, there's a marketing strategy on there. And we're going to talk about that a lot later. Uh, in the course, but there is a list of 21 questions that I do have the sellers ask other agents when they're interviewing. And Brad just happened to have a different list. But if I didn't know all those answers, I could have been screwed at my own game. And that's probably something I taught him from stage and it almost backfired on me if I didn't know my own um, skill. All right, our data lead follow up. This is, this is a big one, you guys, and I want you to pay close attention to this. Many agents feel following up with leads is prospecting. It is not. I've screwed myself over and over and over with this. Following up with all these good leads, eventually you list them or sell them homes and your pipeline diminishes. And before you know it, you're on the real estate roller coaster. You're like, what happened to all my business? I, I've sold every, all these people homes. I've listed and sold all these homes. Now I have nothing. So prospecting and lead follow up are two very different things. And it's hard because once you've already found people that want to move, it's easier to follow up than it is to prospect for cold new leads. And we get, as agents, we just like that. It's hard. It's hard to prospect every day. So following up is much different than prospecting, you guys, especially some of you big team leaders that are watching this right now. You know who you are. Make darn sure that we don't let these agents get into that. Okay, an hour a day of file check. Now, this is something that blows my mind. Agents, once they get an escrow, they say, well, I want to be a good agent. I want to make sure my clients are happy and I want to make sure everything's done right. Well, what I know from experiences is BS. You guys don't want to prospect. You don't want to do your skill set. You don't want to do anything. You just want to baby this one or two files. Now you have to stop this. There's people way smarter than you that are better at this than you and you need to let them do it. Their the files can check themselves with help from other people. So once you get two or three escrows, don't get into the day-to-day -day busy work of uploading photos and God only knows what you guys do with file check stuff, but don't do it anymore. It's ridiculous. Um, and then after that, then we get to go on our appointments. So if you look at this eight hour day, you're like, wait a minute, Mike, 
this is eight hours you gave me and then you gave me more on top of that. Yeah, well, until you have five, 10, 15 escrows, you're gonna work sometimes more than eight hours a day. But if you cram all this stuff in a little bit differently, it's okay. Like you could do your self-help and your skill set at five in the morning when you're on the treadmill. So you don't really need to break it out. You can knock out two birds with one stone. You could actually um, set up your daily hot sheet so it's already done every day. It's much faster. You can have your assistant or your um, whoever helps you with your business set up your you know times to go out and see property. There's a lot of different ways we'll teach you time management in here too. So episode 17 on the Real Estate Marketing Show is just a podcast I did one day and I had an agent, a newer agent goes, Mike, I don't know what the heck to do all day. I really don't. I come in and I start fiddling with stuff and I, I play in the MLS and I look on Zillow and I'm like, oh my God, these people need help. So this particular podcast is an hour long and it's part of your homework um, is what should I do all day as a real estate agent to be successful. So make sure you write that down, especially team leaders. Give that to your new team members. I can see Larry here, and we got a couple new people on there. I'm like, yes, that's you. Write that down. <laughs> um, all right, so let me look at the questions really quick to see if there's anything that we need. A team, Chris, how are you taking to the show? Broadcasting. Yeah, so Jim Godwin's on here. He's basically my health coach, and he's got me fasting intermittent fasting and it's i can't even eat yet today until 20 more minutes so yes jim we're doing that um oh and jen yes i remember that in salem perfect all right so moving right along i hope you guys are enjoying this and i hope it's not too boring but this is some of the stuff that's gonna it's gonna make all the difference in the world when you start this why can't i let's see here all right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you guys a, a few seconds for any questions that you might have or any debate or anything that we just went over. Does anybody wants to come off mute and ask any questions on how to successfully get your mindset going, successfully get your daily schedule going? Um, this is the part where people usually go, but, 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 but. So I wanna give you guys a chance to ask any questions right now. Mike. Yes. There's Lonnie. Hi. Hi, honey. Uh, so what if I are already doing most of this stuff, you're already doing 50 plus transactions by yourself. What do you do? Like, I guess for me, how do I incorporate that, like doing this and still growing and still building my team and every recruiting and everything else. Like that's the issue that I'm having is like the time management piece of things. Cause literally I'm, I'm going, I'm waking up early in the morning, I'm not going to bed till like 11, 12 at night. And then I'm doing like getting like two or three hours sleep. Right. And that's, and that's, that's called normal. And for those of you that aren't at, at Lonnie's position and production, it's going to be your problem very soon. So this is, so there's a couple of things, Lonnie, and I'll work with you one-on-one -on -one as well, but we're going to have to build the right team, right? Um, we're going to need to focus a little bit more on time management and especially for you, because I know you're kind of a control freak. We're going to work for you on delegation a little bit. Um, so well, I'm bringing, I know I'm bringing on two people right now. One that I've been trying to recruit for four years, one for two years, and they finally agreed to come on board last week. So that's that message I sent you guys. And one's taking over compliance and contracts and stuff like that. Then I have another one taking over, like helping the newer agent or my agents with sales production stuff. So that way I'm not be all every, everything. And so I think those are the two components where I'm going to, like, I know it's going to take time to build those pieces out, but, just more time. It's just more time right now. Right. So, so basically you're going to have to put in a couple hours right now just to deal with that. But did you watch the class that we did on teams that's on the YouTube channel that we just uploaded a few weeks ago? I haven't yet. No. Okay. So that'll answer 90% of your questions that you had right now. Okay. Uh, so make sure you watch that and then reach out to me individually. Can you put that in chat for me or have your, your, Anna, if you're still watching, will you throw that in the chat? Uh, anybody else, guys? You guys want to yes. move? On? Okay, what is that? Uh, like, yeah, it's a little bit what the other gal just said because I'm more of a solo agent, so it's more about that delegation. But I think you said just watch the Teams video. Yeah, the, the Teams okay. video is going to be really important, and 
and for those of you that are at that point where you might have one or two or three escrows going, and I, I think basically most of these names on here, I can tell you are, I would, I would, I would immediately, if you're not using an outside um, transaction coordinator, find one that is good. And there's lots of them in your town, I promise you. Uh, even if they work for another agent, sometimes the other agents will let you use them. And then the most important thing right now is when I talked a little bit about before taking risks, this is might be the time where you're going to have to take a little bit of a risk, but I promise you it'll be worth it. Hire a personal assistant, even if it's part time to start and then gradually roll into a full time position position. But your personal assistant's going to be everything for you right now because you're going to you're going to see you're going to free up two or three hours a day. And then you're going to be able to be more productive when you're not chasing lunch and dry cleaning and prescription medicine and picking up kids from school and all that stuff. So you'll you'll be able to you'll be able to get it going a little bit better than that. Um, all right, let me see. Good, good, Victoria, thank you. Moving to town, saying many was constantly recruiting agents, but I have to sell like money. I have ten agents not producing a lot. All right, so Sharon, I just read that thing, and then that's probably something we can talk about on um, Marco Polo. And the personal assistant can be virtual. Uh, the problem with that is virtual assistants can't pick up your dry cleaning, can't pick up your kids from school, and can't pick up your lunch. So it just depends on what personally you want them to do. So sometimes it could be a bookkeeper, things like that. Um, all right, let's go back into, into our presentation here. Let me get the screen share back on. All right, so here is the point where people usually come to me and say, I don't have enough time to do all this crap you're talking about, Mike. This is a very important thing to read. We often talk about not having enough time rather than focusing on that and complaining to yourself or others about not having enough time. Think about what you do have enough time for. Start talking or thinking about that instead. So over the years, I've caught myself in a lot of predicaments and I've caught a lot of agents in these predicaments and they just go, Mike, I would love to do all those things you just said. I would love to preview for two hours a day. I would love to prospect for two hours a day. Where's the time? I don't have time. Well, time is something we make and time is something we choose, right? So kind of like for me, email right now. I am not going by somebody else's checklist. It could literally take me three hours a day to go through email. I refuse to do it. If you have something I need, give it to me, but I'm not going to spend three hours checking email a day. I'm just not gonna do it. Somebody else's checklist, right? So, but here's what I do know, and you probably know people, your thoughts become words. Like if you go, I don't have time, and then you say that out loud, I don't have time. Now you've created an action because your body and your mind is gonna do what you're thought about. Now you don't have time for that, and you're gonna create a habit that you don't have time for something, and hopefully it's not something good, but that creates your character and then your destiny. And I have friends of mine that I do not call anymore because every time I've asked them to do something with me, they say, I don't have time. I don't have time. So after a few months of this or a few years of this, I don't call them anymore because they've created their own habits and destiny and character. And I'm just like, no. So every time something like that is about to come out of my mouth, I try like hell to stop myself. And I say, no, look, I'm making the choice if I want to make the time or take the time to do this. Right. So once you've decided and, and, and I'll, I'll use the same story because I love this story. My neighbor came to me one time and said, Mike, you're a very close friend. I'd like for you to come to my wedding in Hawaii. And I just went, whoa, that was so out of, so out of left field. And I told her straight to her face. I go, oh, I wish, but I don't have time to go to Hawaii. And I saw the look in her face and she's like, OK, that's cool. Then I was like, did I really just say that I can fully afford it? I can, I'm the boss. I can take seven days off or three days off, whatever. So I called her back and I said, you know what? I'm going to make the time to go. And I brought my whole family and it was one of the best vacations we've ever had. And, and I look back at the pictures and the videos and I say, look, it's because I made the conscious decision to make the time and stopped myself from going into that realm where I just don't have enough time because I do have the time. I have time to do whatever I want. But the time management episode right here, episode 30, I think it says 30. Does it say 30? I got the control in my way. Yeah. Make sure you guys watch that or listen to that because there's some good tips and tricks in there. And there's been a lot of people that I've taken 
that were completely unorganized with their time and now they're selling well over 100 homes a year and they blame it on time management because it's not that we don't have the skills sometimes, we just don't know how to fit it all in. But when you start using time management and delegation, you can see that there's definitely time to do it. We all know people that sell three, four, 500 homes a year. And we're at, we're at like 20 going, oh my God, I don't have time to do anymore. Well, what's the difference between that person and you? There's no difference. They just have a little bit different skill set. And those are the skill sets that I want you guys to start working on. I remember the year I first sold 100 homes, I was blown away and I was like, oh my God, I sold a hundred homes. And then everybody says, well, how do you have time for that? How do you have time for that? And I started realizing and I started mastering time management. And then when we got to 200 sales a year, and you know, it was like, wow, you know? So, you know, and right now, like, let's be honest, I spend most of my day recruiting, most of my day coaching, most of my day running a team, most of my day working with my property management company. And, you know, we're still running numbers and doing production and people can't believe that we have time to finish all the stuff that we do. And I, and I should stop saying we, and it's because it's me, but, but I, I'm pretty good at time management now. And I think, I think if you guys watch that episode, you'll really like, you'll really like that and enjoy it. Um, so those are, that's kind of the first week as far as the things you guys need to, to work on. Now, next week, what's gonna happen is we're gonna jump into, um, let me stop this. We're going to jump into some skill set stuff. And what I wanted to do real quick was talk to you about um, Maxa and David Knox and some of their homework. And if you guys have any questions, just pop off mute and interrupt me at this point while I do this. But I'm going to go back into. Uh, you got 10 minutes. Perfect. Thank you, buddy. Let's see if I can stop that. All right, cool. Um, all right, so let's go back into that. All right, can you guys all see this or did I not share it yet? Nothing's shared yet. All right. All right, so this is what the David Knox coaching looks like. So I want you guys to look at this and understand somewhat how to navigate this. Um, if you guys don't know who David Knox is, he was a, who he is, he was a mentor of mine in the early 90s. And a lot of the things that he taught me were game changers. And I'll give you an idea. If you look at his videos, they have, um, here, I'll just go to this real quick. It's kind of funny and I love to show this to you guys because it's so important. So on my website, I actually use this. There is consumer education videos. So you could put this on your website, but if you look at these videos, they're kind of cool. Selecting your real estate agent, select an agent, uh, don't select an agent based on price, pricing your home for sale, uh, preparing your home for sale, benefits of pre, you can see this selling by owner and expired listings. So what this is, is it's videos done so well, but during these videos, it teaches you all the scripts, all the dialogues, everything that you need to talk to your clients about, he's actually telling your clients. So if you watch these videos enough, time, enough times, you learn the language of how to properly prepare and price and and how to work with expireds and for sell by owners. And that's how I was introduced to David Knox. And I started watching the pricing your home for sale video. And before you knew it, I was getting all these listings priced to sell in a market that was declining in 1992, 1993. And then in 1994, we had this terrible earthquake. So we were in a really bad market, but yet I was pricing home. So I started going, well, this David guy knows what he's talking about. So if you look over here, personal development, marketing, prospecting, there's listings, 10 week listing course, pricing, luxury, buyers, closing objections, negotiation, building a team, technology, financing, financing and legal, and then there's all kinds of other stuff. You could search by newer agents, rising stars, which is kind of, you know, somebody's rolling two or three escrows, and then top producers. If you're a leader, and you're building teams or stuff here. And then these series are series that he used to sell like three day seminars and stuff like that. 
Um, but there's lots of stuff for you guys to get access to. So if today we were talking about uh, mindset. We were talking about time management, right? So you can go through here and talk about and, and type in here, mind, is that even one word or two words? I don't even know. So then you can get it, you can type in whatever, here's mindset affirmations. If you guys don't use affirmations, you probably should. I use affirmations when I drive up to listing appointments, when I used to go on listing appointments a lot. Methods, so you see how to use this if you wanted to learn about FISBOs, right? Type in FISBO and then all those come up. So it's pretty cool and it's basically, a support vehicle for me with my team and my agents because I can say, listen, there's different things, but here's something else I wanted you guys to see. I can sign you up for these classes. If you're a new agent, I wanna put you on the new agent fast start, new agent multi-week training um, from new agent to Lex level. There's some really cool stuff here, uh, building and managing a team. Some of you guys are ready for that. So some of it's pretty basic, but some of it gets you know things that are really important to learn. So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this. If at the end of the 90 days, um, it's expensive and I actually have to bump up my subscription because there's so many people in this group now. So, but after the 90 days, if you still wanna continue it, you can call David and I'll make an introduction and you can do your own thing. If you want the videos on your website, um, I can make an introduction for you guys as well. So, and if you haven't seen Maxa, and the reason I'm giving all this to you today is because I want you guys to master this as part of your homework. Um, because we're gonna be talking a lot about this stuff. So here is the Maxa. Um, you guys have to understand right now, presentation and social media is everything. As our market shifts, and it is in many of your states across the country, I understand there's more of a buyer's market than it is a seller's market now. Um, but for instance, a home seller is going to um, be a lot more uh, critical when hiring an agent. So our presentations. So you might wanna go to your um, listing presentation. And, and not, not that you might, you'll want to for sure but you might wanna click on this listing presentation and get yours dialed in. Now remember I told you you guys can take the EXP logo off of this and um, handle that, but you can see this is a 24 page um, listing presentation booklet. And some of you guys have had Maxa for a very long time through me and you haven't even touched it yet. So I'm gonna urge you to get together with your teams, get together with whoever does your marketing. If you need help, there's some really awesome tutorials down at the bottom but if you filled this out properly and actually used it, you can see that you can talk about your company's story and you can just build a really nice listing presentation out of here. And I'll go back to ours because eventually what I want to do by the time we're done with this, you guys, is I'm going to have you being doing your listing presentations via Zoom like I do. Um, so you click on sell here. You're going to go to our marketing strategy. And Deanna built this really cool thing for me here. But this is our listing presentation that was, you know, the same as Maxa. And I actually will go over a listing presentation just like this with a, a potential seller. And just to give you guys a little taste of this to motivate you to use it, I just say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, one of the benefits of working with Team Bjorkman is we have very extensive marketing. And why don't we do this? I know you're busy and I know you, uh, but do you have a lunch break or could you possibly meet with me after work on the computer? I want to see if we're a good fit personality wise, but also I want to go over some of the marketing with you. So I go over the marketing and I just talk to more face to face, just like this. And then, oh, and by the way, here's those questions. So here's the 21 point checklist to ask the questions. So it's really important that you guys build something like this out um, for your own, let's say I just stopped sharing, didn't I? For your own businesses. But more importantly, or I shouldn't say more importantly, but just as important is the, um, how do I get out of that? Back to Max. Eh? is a lot of it, what we're doing right now is we're gonna be doing social media. I want you guys to be extremely active on your social media. And people say, but Mike, I don't know what to, um, what to do for social media. So you go into your designs, 
and there's going to be off the social media, social media posts. There's tons of stuff, Facebook banners. So every day I'm going to ask you guys to take one of these and put your own logo in and you can edit these really easily. Um, you could drag your own photos in here. You can make these completely make these yours, right? Um, so you can customize anything. You could say, I don't care about the mailbox. You want to do, you want to move it around, um, you know, change. It's editable. It takes seconds to build these, you guys. Um, so I want you to get very comfortable with Max because there's going to be a lot of different things that we're going to use in here. Um, email signatures. There's so much stuff. And you can see how our team uses it. Um, we got a lot of cool stuff in there. But you'll be surprised how you will use things for marketing that normally you wouldn't. So um, make sure you guys get in the group. If you're not already, make sure you get on Maxa and David Knox today and do your homework. And that's it for today, you guys. I hope um, you're gonna, I hope you kind of like today and get you in the right mindset. Um, because next week we're going to dive in and it's going to get really technical, really fast. I'm going to start sharing with you all those shiny objects, all the things that you wanted today that you're hoping to get today, but you're going to get more. Uh, we're going to start getting into it next week. So um, I think, Deanna, I hopefully you wrote some of this stuff down. And so homework, Maxa, David Knox, those podcasts we went over, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in our group. So you could go back and watch this and you could have your teams watch it. And if you missed half of it, some of it, um, make sure you're back up and running. And like I said um, last week, if you guys um, don't feel comfortable in the group and don't want to make the commitment, that's okay too. Just remove yourself. It doesn't hurt my feelings or anybody else's feelings. Okay, guys, I love you. You're the best. Make sure you mark with me, tag me, prove to me that you're doing all your homework. Remember the squeaky wheel gets the grease and don't worry about anything about bugging me. Okay, guys, we'll talk to you next week. Monday, zoomwithmikeb.com. Bye.